Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 122, brought to you every Friday or most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton. We have with, with us today a special guest, Hayden. Welcome. Thanks for joining, Hayden. Uh, great to be here, Anton. Um, we normally get these in under the wire, but today was really by the skin of our teeth. <laughs> Starts at 12.05, man. You only have to be ready at 12.04.59. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, uh, and you know, I had planned to look up, we did an episode a while back on um, making use of Apex features that, um, that even keep you from having to have tables. Um, that was around preferences. Um, yes. But, you know. Uh, the, um, and, and the lesson there was um, if you're going to, uh, if you want to store user preferences, don't create your own table, use the Apex preferences that are built for you. Right. Yeah, you don't. It's a, it's amazing. You don't. You don't even need the table. Um, and today is another one uh, that's like that. And I will say there, there's going to be a little bit of controversy, I think, um, on this one because I'm going to say that in many cases, um, you don't even need a lookup table if you plan to store a code like um, red, green, blue colors. If you store store um, really kind of any kind of code like that, uh, Apex has a way to do that. Um, and particularly if it's a design time element, if it's something that your application doesn't need your end users to be able to change on a regular basis, um, but that you're willing to do a code deployment with, you can do it this way. Um, and uh, because uh, certainly a theme in many of our tips is deploying data is very hard. So if you can get Apex to do it for you, yeah, uh, you want to leverage that if possible. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of advantages to this. Um, I think we can do the tip in five minutes, but then we can maybe after the five minute tip, talk about mitigating some of the concerns people might have about it. Great. So why don't we jump right in? We'll share my screen. We'll talk about the tip and we'll do it in five minutes. I think we, I think we can get there. Um, so Aiden, I, what I have here is I actually have a plugin and the plugin is ultimately going to have a lot of capabilities. Um, you know, close up your screen a little bit. Oh, sure. Um, and what this plugin's job is, is to allow you to put reactions on the page and, and, and do a whole bunch of things with reactions. Um, so I actually have a, an item plugin here for reactions and it's, I've got it here twice. Um, so I wanna be able to store the list, list of reactions that av it, are available for this particular item. So, oh, let me click uh, our start button. So where would you, and, and, and this data is ultimately gonna get stored against, um, in, uh, in a table, you know, whether you like something, you dislike something, you love something, those kinds of things. Um, yeah. So I think often people would create a reactions table with the, the list of reactions, and it would just be a, like a name value pair or something like that. Right, and, and that would have the advantage of being able to establish a foreign key relationship Yes, right, absolutely. Um, so, um, but what I'm going to say is Apex has a way to store this data already. Any guess? Where, where can you store it? Uh, you can uh, store them in lists of values. Absolutely. Just, just you can have a static list of values. Um, if I come here right really quickly, you'll see I actually have two static lists of values. I, I might even have three or four, but the two we're talking about is reactions and reactions extra. And so, those lists of values have like, dislike, um, and reactions extra has uh, love, scary, whatever, you know, cheers, etc. cetera. Um, so why do them here instead of in your own table? Well, uh, certainly one key feature is um, translatability. That's, that's a huge one for me. I think any time that you need to be able to translate something, um, it's a big deal. Now, okay, do you need to translate icons? Uh, icons are uh, definitionally universal. Right, except if it's a screen reader or something like that, you want to give it a tool tip, right? What does that icon mean? So if I hover over this, you can almost see it says love. If I inspect it, you'll see um, that it actually says love right here on the right. So you can see that it says love. But what if I switch to French? Well, 
I wanted to say something other than love. In French, I wanted to say j'adore, right? So if we take this inspector here, it says j'adore. Love it. Right. So that's a big part of it. Now, there's, there are additional advantages as well um, of, of doing it this way. You, you get a whole bunch of things in here that you might not think of when you're, when you're doing your own, but you, you become sort of accustomed to having these after a while in Apex. If I edit this, I get a couple other things. I get um, a condition type. So we've talked before about how to make use of, of the condition. Um, you can use the Apex plugin util that um, is component used uh, API to, to run the condition that gets here. So you, you have that a capability. You have build options. This, that same plugin will handle build options. So you've got these kinds of things that you can put here. And then there's also this template. Um, if you want to make use of this template, it allows you to do things. In this case, the display value actually gets translated here. So we're we're actually putting this this in here right now. Um, yeah. So and, uh, I don't know if we've done enough justice to what I think is the chief advantage, which is um, a facility of deploying the data. Yes. And so how would you deploy this data? You would just um, install the app. Just install the app. So you make a design time change um, and you install the app. Now, um, if you don't want to install the whole app, you can sh you can do individual components. You can just install just this this list of values. So you make the change in dev environment. You you export just this component. Import into test. Import to to prod. There you go. Um, so I think mm -hmm. it's important. yeah, as someone who struggles with deploying data, that is very attractive. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, so um, and what I'll say here is I never intend to use these list of values in any other way. They are only going to be used within my plugin. And so I'm not planning to use these list of values as, as sort of an apex component, an apex item. I'll, I'll never use them as a select list, but I have them here. I think it's probably worth taking a quick look at the actual uh, plugin itself. This plugin, I've kept it super simple just for this example. Um, there would be a lot more here, but the, the key is this. I'm, I'm looping through Apex application LOV entries, and I'm saying the list of values names is my static LOV name, and that, that was the attribute I passed in. So right here, I have uh, an attribute reaction LOV name, and that is mapped in my plugin um, to the, this right here. So, so, so this query where you're selecting from LOV entries, the workspace is Anton. You don't really need that um, because you've got this application ID. Um, uh, so, and the app, app translation ID is a key element for making sure that you get the right language. You want to use app translation ID, not app ID. Um, right. Uh, so there you have it. Um, I think that's it. Yes, and we promised our uh, viewers to discuss the uh, mitigating the downsides of this approach. Yes. Um, and so, uh, so if you came in just for five minutes, like, subscribe, tell your mom about the show, all those things. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so you mentioned right away having a foreign key. Um, so that would be certainly one way to, um, to have referential integrity. Of course, this is a view. You can't have a foreign key against a view. But as it turns out, you can have a foreign key against a materialized view. So if, if, you, if you have a concern that this data that they, they, they clicked on the thumbs up icon and you're gonna store that somewhere and you wanna make sure that there's just no way for them to get something that's not in one of your, one of your lists of values, you could create a materialized view that queries your list of values um, and um, and refreshes uh, whenever you uh, whenever you refresh the application, you would say refresh the materialized view. Um, and, and while I do like that solution, perhaps it is the case that if referential integrity is very important, it's not the best candidate for this approach. Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, I think it. You know, maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. The, the, the problem there, the reason the refresh might not work well for you is because if you're going to do a refresh of materialized view, 
under the circumstances, and there's a li- it becomes a little bit complicated. In this case, you would actually have to disable that pouring key constraint because you're not going to be able to do a complete refresh. And it, because of the way Apex deletes things and brings them back in and so forth, you're not going to be able to do an incremental refresh. You're going to have to do a complete refresh. So when you do a complete refresh, you're actually deleting the rows from materialized view. That's going to cause the foreign key to have a problem. So you have to actually disable the foreign key, refresh um, the materialized view, re-enable the foreign key. It could take a moment. Um, so uh, for folks that, that, I mean, it's it's an instant, but it's, it's an instant of vulnerability. Um, the other thing is you could put a check constraint against this. And you can just say, you can, uh, at, when you redeploy this, you could um, update the check constraint and put a check constraint on that has um, all of the valid items you have in there. I suspect, I think it's unlikely in this particular scenario, and for most static LOBs that we're talking about like this, you're not going to have thousands of items. So you're gonna have you know, something that would fit in a check constraint. So that's another option. Um, so there you go. Those are a couple of ways you can mitigate your, your concerns if you really have a concern in this. I, I mean, I think some of these kinds of things are less concerning than others. Um, data is data is important, but whether it's um, uh, uh, transforming uh, a like character into an emoji, a like string into an emoji, or a Y character into a yes, or something like that, like the um, th- the stakes of of not uh, successfully the stakes are pretty low in those circumstances. Right. Right. Uh, certainly for this case. Um, so um, the, the other thing, though, is this is a tailor-made example, right? This the, Using a plugin in this way is, you know, it's, it's sort of the, the key example. But I can see other places and have done this for other things as well, um, where it's not just plugins, but there's other places where um, I don't intend to use the static LOV inside Apex in any particular way, but I want that data available to me. Um, and I, I've used it in other ways as well. So I, I found that uh, it's uh, especially from a translations perspective that I can I can easily update translations um, through a uh, an LOV this way. So yeah. that's well, very I, cool. Um, I I really like this tip. So, um, uh, can I show the plugin attribute? Sure. Yeah, let I can show the plugin attribute where I do it. So all I do is if we go to page one. Um, and I have um, my plugin right here, and there it is. I just put in the LOV name. Um, it would be great to have this be a select list. You certainly could do that as a developer if you want, but then you, unfortunately, item plugins only allow for static, um, static LOVs within the plugin itself. So you can't do a query, um, but. Uh, but here, all I do is the, the developer would create, um, you can either reuse one that already exists because you, you're doing it throughout your application, or you would um, you create a new LOV and just put the name in there. Um, that's it. So. Great. Uh, yes, three minutes, yes. Having a dynamic select list in the, um, in the item plugin would be great. Um, I'll, I'll show while we're here. Or while we're talking, I'll just show it really quickly. When you go into the plugins itself, reaction, we look at this um, this right here. What we're talking about is this um, is just a text item. Um, but if you, there is an option. I'll, I'll create another one because once you've used it, you can't change it. Um, let me just create another attribute. Um, you can make it a select list. But when you do that, select list, um, the type is static. You can't, you know, it'd be great if you could do a query here. And that's what we, that's what we love to be able to do, but no. Um, all right. Well, Hayden, um, this was, uh, this was fun. Yeah. Our viewers have wasted a perfectly good uh, 14 minutes at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So not so bad today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, well, I'll see you next week. See you next week. Have a good weekend, everybody. Carlos, thanks. Bye-bye.